Okay, so this is Apollo. Hey, Apollo. So I've come to the University of Louisiana to visit a research facility well known for stumping chimpanzees. If it's a heavy one, he's supposed to put it in the tray on his right, the blue one. The man who runs this lab and who believes his experiments prove chimps' minds are very different from ours is Danny Pavanelli. So it was heavy and he put it in the blue tray. That's right. The chimps have been looked after since they were babies by Anthony Rideau. Danny calls Anthony the chimp whisperer because of his rapport with the animals. But even Anthony takes no chances with security, for which I'm about to be very grateful. Okay, so now this time it's a light object, and he can't know that until he picks it up. Oh, he got it wrong. That's what I call an exit. Apollo obviously needs a break, and so he's replaced for the moment by Megan and her new baby. Good job. Very good. Very good. Good girl. Uh, she just got the light one correct. We schedule calls for her to get the heavy one now. We're going to see if she knows what to do with it. Okay, so Megan's going to come in. It's a heavy object. Megan had a lot of practice sorting heavy and light objects, and she good needed job. it. Good job, Megan. It takes them hundreds of trials. On average, it took our chimps uh, about 800 trials mm -hmm. to learn how to sort reliably just this first set of objects. Uh, and then you give a new set and a new and set. And the and second set. set, would that take fewer trials? It takes a fewer trials, like maybe 400. <laughs> and at what point, how many times do they have to go through this before they get the idea that uh, you can generalize about heavy and light. Well, I don't think they ever get the idea that you can generalize yeah. about heavy uh, and light. Uh, I think eventually what happens is that their bodies become sensitive instruments to heaviness and lightness. Yeah. And so their bodies know what to do uh, with the objects. How does that differ from us? I mean, how do we know that we don't have that same uh, signal from our bodies that we interpret as heavy or light? Well, we do, and that's the fascinating thing about studying the similarities and differences between chimps. It's because most of the time, I think we're acting pretty much like chimps. <laughs> Humans didn't discard uh, the old chimp-like or uh, ape-like way of understanding the world. We wove into our minds these additional high-level concepts. Hey, buddy, look at this. This is going to be fun. Come on. Let's go. Look, let me show you. Why don't you grab this right here? Let me show you where this one goes. This one goes right there. All righty. Let me show you where this one goes. Yeah, go ahead. Grab it. This one goes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So this is interesting. He immediately sensed it was different. That's right. And would probably go in the other one. That's right. I and mean, he, he's never done this before, right? No. No, but there's two options. And I think already at this age, three, they're already beginning to see this as a problem to be solved with two solutions, which we never told him. Yeah. But just looking at this situation, he's bringing that scheme to bear on it, yeah. something that maybe well outside the understanding of chimpanzees. Right. So it took Russell less than one trial to pick up on a concept that takes chimps hundreds of trials to learn. Oh, hey, very good. In fact, Danny argues, chimps actually never seem to get the concept of heavy and light. Watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this. And now we can uh, test her uh, and ask her if she knows which one to roll down the ramp when she picks them up. Candy gets to feel how heavy each ball is as she picks it up, but still. <laughs> Just gets one choice. <laughs> okay, we'll get it right next time, Candy. We'll get it right next time. Oh, she takes the ball with her. <laughs> oh, that one didn't work, did it? No. Let's try this one. Let's see if this one works. Whoa, that one worked, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Gracie, go get him and bring him over here. Okay, so we want to do that so they can actually feel the... Okay, why don't you put him on here? Okay, perfect. Okay, can you get it out of there? Hey, good job. I Boy, that was great. Ball. I use the strong ball. Use the strong ball. I know which one was the strong one. You did? Right there. How did you know which one was the strong one? Because I put it there. Oh, you did put it there. How could you tell which one's the strong one? Come see. Tell me which one's the strong one. 
This one. Oh, what, what, well, you didn't even touch that one. How do you know that one's not strong? It's because, watch. Huh. It's not even strong. It's not even strong. That one's strong. Now it's my turn to get into the act. With Apollo looking meaner than ever, I certainly hope Anthony's tightened those bolts. Whoa, so light. Really heavy. Okay. Oh. Okay. All Apollo has to do is choose which rope to pull. As always, he only gets one try. Maybe I didn't show him that was light enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine you were a creature who didn't have a concept of heavy and light. I mean, you just didn't think in abstract terms like this. Yeah. Well, what would be your explanation for why one box moves when well, I pull on it and the other one doesn't? Well, see, uh, it, there would be some unseen being who was keeping me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking all that away from you now. <laughs> you see, in my thought experiment, you're actually a chimp. And yeah. you, you don't have that kind of level of abstraction. Well, how do you know? I mean, how do you know that they don't say every time, oh, there's the great unseen being again? Well, it could be. But then if that were true, why don't they learn it just as rapidly? OK, let's get this down here. This time, we have a panel of kids. Can you go get a plate? Good job. Go get one. Good job, Gracie. Go ahead, come here. She's like, oh, this is not it. OK. OK. So which one's the heavy one? That one. How did you know that? Because when Mr. Allen held it, his hand went down. And, and concepts about weight, heavy and light, at that level of abstraction, are no different than concepts about something as abstract as love. When Camille is holding her kitten, and the kitten is purring, and she's stroking it, she, and she loves her kitten. Uh, when a young boy hands a young girl a rose, when a husband and wife put their arms around each other and bring their lips together, well, what's the same about all of those at a perceptual level? Not much. But at a deep underlying abstract level, we are able, our minds are able to bridge and say, oh, it's love. That all makes enormous sense. I just don't understand why gravity makes us fall in love. <laughs> well, it's the, the pull on our heart. <laughs>